greetings to you. Probably this will be my last class uh, in uh, infrared uh, spectrometry. In the next uh, session, I am planning to give a course on uh, this electrochemical technology for pollution control monitoring. So, let us continue where we had left off in the last class. I had shown you the typical IR spectrums for different compounds and uh, now I want to teach you about uh, the gas analyzers, IR gas analyzer. These are basically a very uh, reason of uh, very useful nature not meant for complicated chemical identification, but for com for chemical analysis of the gases quantitative. So, the applications of typical gas analysis such analysis are in the petrochemical industries where methane, butane and ethylene, polypropylene such gases are pro being produced mass produced. What we need is online gas analyzers regarding the control of the reactions as well as to monitor the reactions and uh, analyze. So, the IR gas analyzers are of recent origin to the quantitative gas analysis uh, techniques. So, here it is a very simple gas analyzer uh, schematic diagram I am showing you. These are all available commercially also, but uh, only petrochemical complexes etcetera where there is a need they will be apply using such chemicals, but the principle is very simple. So, analysis for single gas component can be carried out by using a simple IR filter photometer. So, the here we have a very simple primitive instrument which is used for quantitative analysis. What I have here is a source of IR sources we have already discussed earlier. Okay. There is nothing very special about it. Uh, it can be a silicon carbide rod or it may be uh, thermocouple nichrome wire or anything. So, this is the thermo source IR source. I have a chopper here for uh, one for reference one for uh, standard and this is a concave mirror to make the IR beam coming in parallel. Now, the sample cell uh, this is a motor for rotating this uh, chopper that means, at one time when it cuts it will pass through radiation will pass through the top portion and when it is rotating it will cut the top portion and sample will uh, radiation will be passing through the bottom cell. So, the samples I have two sample cells of this may be of about 10 centimeter okay, 10 20 depending upon the analyzer uh, sensitivity we need. I have one sample cell and one reference cell. Okay. So, here I have an interference cell these, uh, this also contains some of the gases that we want to eliminate uh, that is uh, they are present along with the sample, but in the interference uh, cell there is no sample here actual sample these are uh, the common will be other gases that are present in the sample cell and interference cell okay. that is the function of the interference cell to, um, to eliminate the IR peaks or uh, IR quantitation coming from other components matrix components. So, D and D dash are the uh, um, diaphragms okay, gas filled with uh, argon or xenon and this is a diaphragm uh, what you see a double um, bond uh, like thing here now. So, that is a this one, this is a diaphragm and this is a wire to an electrical balance circuit. Now, this is the basic arrangement. So, when the sample uh, gas is uh, radiation is passing through once it passes through the sample cell annuls all the interference uh, cells and reaches this D and when the referen reference cell contains the gas to be analyzed in pure form and that is fixed here 
and D and D dash will contain the gases. So, so long as the sample cell does not have any uh, uh, any sample that is to be analyzed in a sample of our interest reference cell and sample cells will be matching. That means, the diaphragm will be in some sort of equilibrium okay, because the radiation will fall on this both of them will be expanding to the same extent and diaphragm will be held in equilibrium. And uh, this one uh, the energy is split into two beams directed towards bolometer wired in a balance circuit the sample gas flows through a cell that extends across the both the two beams. So, one beam passes through a filter cell and the other one through a compensating cell. So, filter cell contains pure gas being analyzed and the compensating gas contains a gas similar to that being analyzed without the sample. So, for example, in the analysis of ethylene, ethane, methane, etcetera, three wavelengths can be selected in the IR region. So, if a filter cell is filled with ethylene, all IR absorbed by ethylene will be completely eliminated from B1 and also from the sample. So, it is something like cancelling each other. Okay. So, uh, interference of methane also can be similarly eliminated by placing pure methane in the interference cell. So, that filters out from both the beams the wavelengths absorbed by methane. So, only ethylene is being determined using, uh, uh, using this arrangement from 0 to 10 percent in a sample gas. You should uh, see note down the percentage here you are talking we are not talking about the ppm level or milligram level or something like that trace ultra trace no we are talking about percentage that is why such instruments are used in the uh, process uh, industries petrochemical complexes. Here I am showing you another arrangement that is uh, source is here sample cell is here here I do not have a reference cell only the sample cell. Here I have an interference cell using the same principle which I had enumerated earlier and then I have a filter cell here, a compensating cell here and a bolometer here. There is no uh, um, both are not connected with a di expandable diaphragm. Okay. So, in this case the uh, radiation falls here when the sample is there it will show some difference and the um, the filter cell uh, will expand and then it will obstruct the IR uh, radiation reaching the uh, detector the bolometer and uh, the so much quantity will the imbalance will be registered as a signal. So, both these uh, thing, uh, uh, instruments designs are both popular the more primitive one is the second one which I have shown you the previous one is the this is seems to be more appropriate to the current one because the reference cell and sample cell both are being determined simultaneously. Okay. Now, uh, another uh, arrangement I have that arrangement I have shown here uh, I have already explained to you. So, this is also essentially the uh, regarding the explanation of, of for the two types. Okay. Uh, first type this is the explanation for the first type. So, detection limits of some gases both the instruments are called as non dispersive infrared spectrometers. Why? Because we are not going to use any dispersion prisms, gratings nothing like that only total IR radiation it is like a filter photometer. You must have seen many infrared in instruments in your gym if you are in the habit of going to gym or going to doctors they for a pain relief pain relieving they give you an IR lamp. Okay. The, the IR lamp normally has only a filter they will focus it on the pain so that the molecules will respond to the pain and functional groups etcetera. So, the pain reduces. So, in this case also 
both these uh, quantitative spectrum what I had de defined earlier, they are all filter photometers. I just have a small filter to remove unwanted radiation, but all IR radiation I am focusing. So, detection limits of some gases of non-dispersive infrared spectrometer, these are called as non-dispersive infrared spectrometers. If you want to determine carbon monoxide, you can determine 1 mole percentage and carbon dioxide is 0.1 mole, SO2 is 0.1 mole, ammonia is 5, CH4 is 1, 1 percent mole, 1 mole percent and ethylene and C2 H, H6 that is uh, ethane is 0.1 mole. C4 H10 is uh, 0.1 mole, C2 H2 is 1 mole, 1 percent, 1 mole percent and C3 H6 is uh, this is CN H2 and this is methane, ethane, butane etcetera. Okay. So, quant this is one type of quantitative analysis we use in process instruments. Now, if you want to do quantitative analysis of infrared, what type of uh, work you will do in the laboratory for a given specific uh, system is uh, just like what we do in a uh, spectrophotometer. Quantitative IR analysis is based on Beer Lambert's law. So, chemical and instrumental effects may cause apparent deviation, there is certain limit of our the Beer Lambert's law they you cannot use very high absorbance values also, because earlier uh, in my spectrophotometric course I have taught you that more than 1.2 absorbance should not be used for Beer Lambert's law applications that will not apply here, but some other limit should be applying. Since the energy changes are quite small in infrared compared to uh, ultraviolet or visible range. See energy changes I have already described that uh, electronic stair state energy changes are of the order of about 35 to several hundred kilocalories. In IR it is only a few kilocalories, few calories. Okay. So, it is necessary to use rather wide slit the which introduces errors in the molar absorptivity. So, molar that is why I was making a statement that you cannot use molar absorptivity as an exact quantity, because there is always certain amount of uncertainty involved in this. Hence, it is only empirical, usually baseline method is employed for quantitative analysis. How do we do that it is a very simple system, you pick up any IR peak. Okay. This is uh, in terms of uh, tr transmittance now, so IR peak will uh, this is 100 percent. 100 percent transmittance means it is the baseline okay. and then uh, you choose the uh, percent transmittance from the bottom of the peak. This is uh, um, absorbed okay. the amount of this is the incident radiation P and uh, this is P naught, P naught is the uh, original radiation and P is the transmitted radiation what is P naught minus p is what is absorbed. So, that you correlate it to concentration, this is 0 percent, this is 100 percent, this is wavelength. Wavelength has no meaning if you want to do a particular quantitative analysis. Now, a typical IR spectrum would not be so simple at all, but it will be like what I am showing you here in B. Here you see IR peak is quite complex and you, if you are choosing this uh, peak, you do not know whether to use this as the base peak 100 percent transmittance or this as the base peak or this as the base peak or this as the base peak, but you can be consistent and use the whichever one you want to use, use but be consistent and use the same base peak for all these things that is important. So, IR analysis you have to take different concentrations weigh them accurately and then take the IR spectrum and then correlate to the absorbance, draw a separate plot 
and then determine the unknown. So, it is quite a bit complicated structure, but it can be done. Okay. So, in this method what we do is a suitable I R band is selected, incident uh, radiant energy P naught is obtained by draw a tangent, transmittance is measured, P log P naught by P is plotted against concentration. Same cell is used for all determinations, many possible errors are eliminated. For solids we have to again weigh the KBR also, because we are going to make the KBR pellets now. So, when we use the KBR quantity also should be exact. So, they are mixed with various quantities of the analyte and we take the IR spectrum. I can use an internal standard, so standard of potassium thiocyanate at 0.2 degree 0.2 percent by weight of KBR and that shows a peak of 2125 centimeters inverse to a chosen band is plotted against concentration that is uh, as simple as that. Okay. So, this is where most of our uh, infrared uh, discussion ends and uh, I hope I have given you uh, fairly good amount of knowledge regarding the atomic absorption uh, sorry regarding the atomic structure, electromagnetic radiation, interaction of electromagnetic radiation and then infrared instrumentation followed by application of IR. I wish you all the best in your endeavors for your uh, future studies or investigations or learning procedure, learning programs and I just want to end my lecture. I wanted to show you this IR spectrometer. The uh, current IR spectrometers look something like this the left side is the IR peak, IR source and optics. This is the sample and here is the microprocessor. So, everything looks very sophisticated and beautiful, but the interpretation is also complicated, but it can be done. So, I wish you all the best in uh, this course and I hope you have learned something more useful than what they teach you at the universities or something like that, because there is nothing like learning from a teacher. Whatever doubts you have etcetera, you please contact me, uh, I will be able to help you and uh, the best way to learn is to study, study and study. So, thank you very much and all the best, bye bye, good luck.